Hey guys, <clears throat> Sean here. Um, welcome to part two of my Star Wars reviews. <clears throat> so in part one, I did, I showed all the Star Wars merchandise, memorabilia, and stuff that I that I've collected over the years. And I said that basically said that part two would be my <clears throat> review of the prequel trilogy. And so I am going to start that with my review of Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Now, this movie was released back in 1999 under the, under the direction of George Lucas, who has only directed four Star Wars movies. <coughs> this movie stars Liam Neeson, Ewan McGregor, Natalie Portman, Jake Lloyd, Ian McDermott, um, Anthony Daniels, Tony Baker, Pernilla August, Frank Oz, Samuel Jackson, and other people. Um, this movie has a runtime of, um, just got done watching the movie and I didn't like the watch, look, check the runtime. Well done. It has a runtime of 2 hours and 13 minutes. Um, so, yeah, this movie is set about, is, is set 32 years before of the events of SO4. Um, story follows Qui Jedi Knight Qui Gon Jinn's apprentice Obi Wan Kenobi as they protect Queen Amidala in hopes of securing a peaceful end to a large scale implanetary, interplanetary trade dispute. Joined by Anakin Skywalker, a young slave with unusual inherent powers of the Force, they simultaneously contain, contend, contend with the mysterious return of the Sith. So, this movie is the fourth released in the Star Wars saga, but it is, as this can says, it is the first in chronological order. And for newcomers of Star Wars, I would recommend you start with this one. Most people would say that you should start with... You start with this, but I recommend... I respectfully disagree. Start with this one. But that's just my opinion. But anyway. Um, this movie, I, I just got done watching it. And I do think it's a very fun movie. I think it's very entertaining. Um, yeah, it does have some boring parts. But all in all, I think it's a very fun, fun and entertaining movie. Um, I do like the cast that they have in here. Um, I do like the cast. Um, Liam Neeson I thought was great as, as quite on Jin. <coughs> Sadly, he's killed off in this movie. Um, uh, let's see, I, I liked, um, Natalie Portman as Queen Amidala, also on Padme. Um, uh, Ewan McGregor I thought was good as, as a young Obi-Wan who is basically taking over for the, taking over the role of Alec, or, from Alec Guinness from, in the episode 4 through 6, which I'll probably review those tomorrow. Um, and then you got Jake Lloyd as the, as the young Anakin Skywalker, the future future Darth Vader and Dark Lord of the Sith. Um, so yeah, I do quite enjoy this movie. Um, some of the, the the score for these movies are is really good. Um, I would say that the Star Wars music and the Middle Earth music are my two favorite um, movie uh, scores. Um, so yeah, this is a, this is a fun movie. Um, do I have any nitpicks of this movie? Um. Uh, probably a couple of nitpicks, but I, but one I will mention is the, and I know a lot of people are gonna probably, are gonna probably shoot me for this one, but I really didn't like the puppet Yoda, and I know it's it's just it's just my opinion. Now, honestly, I think the puppet works for episodes four and five, or for episodes five and six, but when you're trying to portray a younger Yoda, the puppet just looked. It looked like they were trying to portray an older one, if that makes you sense. Because the way the puppet was designed, it did not look like a young Yoda. A young Yoda. But just me. Um, do we have any other nitpicks? Um, uh, some people say that the um, that the, um, the pod race here goes on a little long. Yeah, I will. I will. I will say that. But it doesn't mean it's not fun to sit, just to watch. It just goes on a little long. So all in all, I did enjoy this movie. I thought it was very well done. 
Um, would I say it's my favorite of the saga? No. This one is, and I will get to this one, and I will review this when I get to it. Um, for right now, I am going to sit, put in Attack of the Clones, and I will get back to you guys with my review of it. Bye-bye. Hey guys, um, it's now time for my Attack of the Clones review. Attack of the Clones review. But before I get on to that, I want to show you guys something that I kind of forgot to put in my memorabilia video. So, I'm going to show them here. They are, like, let's see, you got one, one, two, eh, they're basically packs of episode two trading cards. Never opened. So, I just thought I'd show them to, to you, so you guys can see, because I forgot to put them in my memorabilia video. Anyway. You guys are here for my review of Attack of the Clones. Now, this was released in 2002, again under, under the direction of George Lucas. Um, it was written by George Lucas and Jonathan Hales. It is the second installment of the prequel trilogy of the prequel Star Wars prequel trilogy. Again, released in 2002, and it stars Ewan McGregor, Natalie Portman, Ian, Ian McDermott, Sam Jackson, um, Christopher Lee, Anthony Daniels, and Frank Oz. Um, Jake Lloyd is replaced by Hayden Christensen in this movie, as, as this film takes place ten years old, ten years later. When it says when the galaxy is on the brink of of, of civil war under the leadership of a renegade Jedi named D Count Dooku, thousands of planetary systems threaten to to secede from the Galactic Republic. When assassination attempt is made on Senator Padme, the former queen of Naboo, Jedi apparent apprentice is Anakin Skywalker is assigned to protect her, while his mentor Obi Wan Kenobi is assigned to investigate the assassination attempt. Anakin, Padme, and Obi Wan are drawn into the heart of the separatist territories and the beginning of a new threat to the galaxy, the Clone Wars. So, this movie I I think is very is is a very good movie. I find it very enjoyable. The runtime is an hour or two hours and forty-two. It's two hours and twenty-two minutes, which makes it, I think, the longest Star Wars movie. I, I'd have to check that. I'd have to look that up. But I'm pretty sure it's the longest of the Star Wars movies. Um, so yeah, I find this very enjoyable. Do I have any nitpicks with this movie? Um, there's one nitpick I think that I would say. A couple nitpicks. Um, they say in this movie that Jedi's are not supposed to fall in love, meaning they're not supposed to get married. Have, yeah, blah blah blah. If that's the case, how do you explain all the all the younglings? What did they just resort to the Man of Steel code and just have them all grown in a laboratory? Just a little confusing. And um, and there's a part where Anakin basically kills the Sand People on Tatooine when he when his mother's dead. If he kills them all, if he's killed them all, including the women and children, like he says. How are there still saying people in episode 4? Just a couple nitpicks I was a little... You know what I mean? So yeah, this was released um, May 16, 2002. Um, again, under the direction of George Lucas. The music was done by you know John Williams, like always. Um, this movie was... The budget was $150 million. And it made back... 649.4 million. So, a good chunk of change, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, I think this is a very fun movie. I, and then also, uh, also, this movie stars um, Tamora Morris as Jango Fett, the, basically the, the creator of the, of the clone army, which will soon become the Stormtroopers. And this movie also shows the, I guess you could say the origin of Aunt Owen and Uncle Baru, or <coughs> Uncle Owen and Aunt Baru from episode 4, and how they kind of fit into the mythology, which I thought was really cool to see, to see that. Um, some people say in this movie that Anakin is just a, just a whiny kid, 
you know, always whiny, bratty, and whatnot. Well, that's because he's a basically a teenager. He hasn't basically matured yet. That's episode three. That's when he's he matures in episode three. But I just wanted to put that there. So I hate really like this movie. I think it's I think it's a lot of fun. Um, would I say it? I do admit this movie <clears throat> is a little bit better than Phantom Menace, um, but not by much. It's <clears throat> it's still not my favorite in the saga. That is actually the movie that I will be reviewing next. This one. So I will catch you guys later. Or when I review this movie, I should say. Bye bye. Hey guys, it's Revenge of the Sith time. Yes, I just got done watching episode 3 of Revenge of the Sith. And may I just say, this is my favorite of the entire series. Like, literally, my favorite of the entire series. But before I get to the review, same as with the last one, I want to show you some forgotten memorabilia. We'll just say that. And it is part of an old clock I used to have. Um, I used to have, like, a clock that this went to, but it broke for somehow. Maybe I dropped it or something, whatnot. But I kept this because it was Star Wars. And so I just, and plus I really liked it. But, on to the review. So yeah, this is my favorite of the entire series. Um, it stars, let's see, Ewan McGregor, Natalie Portman, Hayden Christensen, Ian McDermott. Ian McDiarmid, Samuel Jackson, Christopher Lee, Anthony Daniels, Kevin Baker, and Frank Oz. So three years after the onslaught, onslaught, onslaught of the Clone Wars, which was in the last movie, the Jedi Knights are spread across the galaxy, leading a massive clone army in the war, uh, in a war against the Separatists. The Jedi Council dispenses Jedi Masters, Master, Master Obi-Wan to commit Kenobi to eliminate the notorious General Grievous, Leader of the Separatist Army. Meanwhile, Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker is separated from his former master, grows close to Chan to Palpatine, the Chancellor of the Galactic Republic, un and unknown to the, to the public, a Sith Lord. Their deepening friendship manages to manages to threaten the Jedi Order, the Republic, and Anakin himself, who eventually, in yields to the dark side, and becomes Darth Vader. This movie was runs two hours and nineteen minutes. And is directed by once again George Lucas, written by Lucas himself. Um, what do I think of this movie? Like I said, my favorite of the series. Um, I like how it fills in that void of the series. It, it, it's the missing puzzle piece, it, as it were, if, if I may say so myself. Um, if I had any complaints, it would be that General Grievous was completely wasted in this movie. In pointless, may I add. You didn't need him. You could have just cut him out and either given Christopher Lee more screen time because he only has maybe five minutes in this movie and then he's killed off. So either give Christopher Lee more screen time or just reinsert the drop subplot which was the basically the formation of the rebellion, of the Rebel Alliance from episodes 4, 5, and 6. So you could either add that subplot back in or just giving Chris really more of his screen time because we didn't need Grievous at all. Um, another nitpicky thingy, nitpicky thing I have is like what some people say the um, the Jedi Purge, we don't call it. It goes on a little too quick. It's it's too fast. It's it goes by in like two minutes if that. You could have developed more time to that. Um. And then there was a, a deleted scene in this mo in, of this movie that I wish that they had, would have kept in, which was this scene where it shows Yoda arriving on Dagobah. Even though it's only, only a 30-second scene, I wish they would have kept that in for people who may not have seen these movies and are and wanted to start with these with the prequels, because otherwise you wouldn't take it would take two movies for you to know where Yoda ends up. I mean, I can see why they left that scene out, Be probably for people who've already seen 4, 5, and 6, and obviously know where he ends up, but you gotta think, for, for newbies to the series who start with 1, 2, and 3, we got to know where Yoda ends up. I'm just saying. But, 
yeah, this is an all around a good movie. I I enjoy it. It is my favorite of the series. Um, and like I said in my Phantom Menace, in the Phantom Menace section of this, um, I may get shot for this, but I actually do prefer the uh, CG Yoda over the puppet because the CG Yoda looked looked like a younger Yoda. The puppet looked like he's still old, but just me. Um, so yeah, I have enjoyed doing the, these, watching these prequel movies and reviewing them. Um, I will do the original trilogy tomorrow, or later today, whichever you want to call it. But yeah, I will be doing the, the original trilogy, um, tomorrow, and I will watch them. The special editions, I will watch the special editions. I don't watch the theatrical ones, or as people call them, the unalterids. I don't watch those. I never will. So I will be basing my review basing my review on these special editions. So I'll see you guys when I do the original trilogy. Bye bye.